are your kids getting enough sleep during the school year? Joining us to talk about your health is Dr. Anna Lasso Perot, Division Head of Pediatric Pulmonology, Allergy and Sleep Medicine at the University of Maryland Children's Hospital, and Associate Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, we're so glad you could join us. We see a lot of school systems making little schedule changes, particularly for high school students in the interest of getting them a little bit more sleep. Is that a good idea? Yeah, I think it's um, definitely a very good idea in the sense that um, it is a frequent problem for children not to get enough sleep. Um, teenagers in particular tend to have a lot of issues with that. And so getting a schedule that provides a little bit of extra sleep for children is actually very important. Do kids need more sleep than, than adults or maybe do they need it a little bit more? Definitely so. Um, kids need more sleep than adults, no question. Um, in fact, sleep needs are based on age. Um, so we are familiar with babies, for example, sleeping um, many, many hours a day. You know, babies basically eat and sleep um, when they're born, and that's it. Um, and as they grow, the n number of hours needed decreases, but definitely um, it decreases slowly. And what I think a lot of people miss is the fact that even um, teenagers need a very um, good amount of sleep to perform appropriately. And if they don't get it, what happens? There is issues with performance in school, um, more difficulties with behavior. Um, you know, we can ex think of that impacting all aspects of their life um, from just regular performance, like I said, in school, performing um, at the time of test, and also definitely, for example, um, something that worries me in particular is driving. Um, so definitely can have a huge impact in the life of a kid. Absolutely. What do you do in, in this situation where um, we're a few days or a week from, from back to school, the alarm clock's going to go off. Maybe, hopefully, they've had a relaxing summer. They maybe stayed up a little bit late. They maybe slept in in the morning. But suddenly, you've got to get them back on schedule. Do you just do it cold turkey, or do you try to shift your schedule maybe half an hour a day over a period of several days? I would suggest shifting the schedule slowly over a week or so, so that they're not going to bed as late as they were during the summer. And I would assume that many children, particularly older children and teenagers, are definitely going to sleep pretty late um, during the summer, so that they get their um, sleep hours a little bit earlier every day, um, and then waking them up a little bit earlier as well. So trying to get them to, to adapt, as you would if, for example, you were traveling overseas. Talk, if you would, about um, the use of technology before bedtime. The, the high schoolers uh, may have a cell phone. They uh, may be able to use it. Uh, there's a couple issues. One is you're, you're getting mentally keyed up with whatever's going on on social media. Two, it's something about, like, the, the light from, from the phone. T tell us about that. Um, I would actually um, think of it not so much as only phone, but um, screen time, you know, screen light, um, which includes phones, tablets, computers, TV. Um, and so it, there is a blue light that comes out of those devices that is interpreted as um, daylight, if you will, by the brain. And so that creates um, an abnormal uh, perception of daytime for our brains, and so it makes it hard to sleep. Um, so in general, the uh, recommendation is to try not to be on a device for the hour or two before bed so that our brain can get into a better state, if you will, for sleep. I know, there, there's something, there's a device called a book. <laughs> There's, there's no blue light comes out of it. It's great. Um, tell us about your work. You, you run a uh, sleep clinic for, for children. What, what sort of problems do you handle there? Um, 
because I'm a pediatric pulmonologist and the main thing I do in sleep is take care of kids with um, obstructive sleep apnea, what we do is evaluate for that and manage it. So that's a very particular topic in sleep medicine um, where children have issues with obstruction of their airway during sleep. And we diagnose it, we treat it. Um, in terms of other sleep disorders, what I would say all pediatricians, including myself, see um, very frequently is the issue of kids not sleeping enough. Um, so enough hours. Basically. Is that a matter of, of having trouble getting to sleep? Um, I would say two things. One is getting to sleep for children that have been um, exposed to devices or just, you know, practicing sports, for example, till very late. And so are very active. Their brain is very active at night and so have a hard time falling asleep. Um, and because they have to wake up early during the school year, they basically don't get the number of hours they need. Um, and in general, I would say the issue is falling asleep because of that, and in some kids having some issues waking up in the middle of the night. But I would say that the main problem is really not getting enough sleep because they go to bed late. How, how do parents know if uh, there's a, a sleep issue that is routine or normal or maybe temporary, or that it's something they need to discuss with their doctor and maybe a specialist? My suggestion is to think of it as if the kid is trying to sleep and not being able to sleep. So if you, know, if you have a teenager who's turning off the lights, trying to go to bed, and they're just in bed sitting, not doing, anything and not falling asleep, I would worry about that child having a true insomnia problem. Um, or if during the night they're waking up, either because they can't sleep or because they have a um, problem breathing during sleep. Um, those are kids where I would connect with the doctors and, and basically think of it as a condition that needs to be diagnosed. Um, the other problem in, in, you know, kind of Contraposition is really the issue of, like I said, not wanting to go to bed or or not even trying, you know, still being on the computer till very late or on the phone till very late. I, I just have time for a sentence or two on this, but is it true that there are actually night owls and early birds? Is that a real thing? Yeah, I think it is um, definitely something real, but it's controversial. Um, there is probably, uh, for sure, some people that seem to be a little bit more um, in tune with their work and do better at night. Doctor, we're going to have to leave it there. Dr. Ana Lasso Perot, University of Maryland's Children's Hospital. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.